Well, hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be talking about installing the Victron Energy Temperature Sensor. Okay. Now, when you go through the uh, uh, owner's manual or installation manual for the Smart Shunt, it tells you to order this sensor right here. Don't make a mistake and order the sensor for Quattro MultiPlus and GX device. This temperature sensor is exactly like it is in this picture or in the uh, owner's manual of the smart shunt. So, don't make that mistake. Order the correct sensor and it will work good. So, now let's dive and talk a little bit about the sensor itself. Alright, here we are in the instruction manual this is a page 5 and this talks about auxiliary connection for the temperature monitoring okay as we are all familiar already with this smart shunt and if you already have one you will know that you do have two connections available on the smart shunt okay one is battery voltage reference voltage and it also used to power up a device this is already on the negative side of the uh, of the battery so you have a one continuous connection if you connect it from a battery positive to voltage reference over here so when you get a temperature sensor it tells you to screw it on a positive side on a positive terminal of your battery now I did not connect it that way I connected totally different what I did was and what we are going to see in a later part of this video is I have connected I already have a reference voltage connected from connection inside the wireway where all the batteries meet and then I brought the and I'm bringing the positive down to the sensor without connecting it to the positive side of of the battery and it's just placing the sensor wherever I want to now why why can we do that well we'll see it over here on example where I record how this sensor how this temperature sensor works which is actually just a thermistor meaning a resistor that changes value depending on the temperature so let's go and take a look at that but for more information visit the page 5 of the manual and get familiar with it okay now we are going to see how does this temperature sensor work well this temperature sensor is based on a thermistor and thermistor is a type of a resistor whose value changes depending on the temperature okay so if we if I take this sensor in my hand and I squeeze it uh, that will transfer the the warmth of my body into this thermistor and it will show a different value so let's show the example of that as you can see the warmer it gets the value of resistor thermistor changes so as we as we saw it already went down by quite a lot okay right now in a room temperature which is about 75 degrees originally it was at around 166 kilo ohms right now when I held it in my hand it, it went down to 131 Point four, and now it's going to slowly start climbing back so that's the basic premise of how this resistor I mean this temperature probe for a weak transmar shot works so the next thing in this process of installing this um, temperature sensor for a smart shunt is to put it somewhere on these batteries. Alright, so I decided to put it on the power wall number two on the bottom row of the batteries which are closest 
to the floor. I think that's where we are going to measure the lowest temperature. Um, actually thinking about putting it somewhere on the second or a third one, I think that will be the best position for them to, to give the best possible reading in summer and in the winter time. And we can maybe guesstimate better the, uh, the capacity of these batteries. All right, so as you can see, this is my power wall. Guys, I'm not touching this at all. I mean, you can see all this stuff in here. And all this construction this year that I did, I mean, there's a dust everywhere, spider webs, but it's keep on trucking. We're gonna keep it like this and see how does this last in the long run. So let's see how we're going to attach this I might even cover this with uh, with something so it doesn't uh, make some kind of a short contact or something to that nature. All right, and it will go through here, through the holes, and I put these little rubber grommets. I bought this one at the Home Depot, drilled a hole in the power wall, and then drilled the hole up in the wire way right here to protect it, and then I put it in the heat shrink over here. We're gonna finish that later, and then we're gonna connect it up on top. And the way that's going to be connected is, since I want the same voltage reference as I have on the smart shunt to be on the sensor, I'm gonna hook it up at the same place where the sensor wire for the smart shunt is. So we will have a same voltage reference for it to read and of course the black wire just connects in the back of the smart shunt. So once I'm done with that I'll show it. So here is the sensor down on the bottom in between the two bottom cells on the left side uh, actually where the cell 16 is module 16 bottom two cells what I did first was insulated with Kapton tape this sensor I put a couple of couple of wraps around it and then I put it on with this Kapton tape this will not be its permanent position I want to see what kind of measurements I get I probably will have to do something else in order to get better readings what I'm thinking is uh, I already tested it but right here it will fit in there perfectly and I think maybe that's where its permanent position should be uh, we'll see but anyway for right now it's down here on the bottom and we'll see how that works so how do we enable temperature sensor? So we we'll go over here in the settings and we're gonna press miscellaneous and then on the auxiliary input we will set temperature. Okay, now temperature shows. Okay, we will go exit this, exit that menu and then your temperature will show down in the bottom and says temperature is at 23 degrees Celsius so we were reading 23 degrees Celsius showing up in a smart shunt app let's see what we can see down there on the bottom right now 22.8 I want to say that's damn close all right I'll see if we get better data than 23 degrees Celsius uh, in a smart shunt once I pull it up through the uh, home assistant uh, sometimes they do show uh, decimal points 22.9 all right I think that looks good that looks pretty precise so let's go from here so here we are at page 20 of instruction manual for the smart shunt here it talks about temperature coefficient this setting is only available after auxiliary input setting has been sent to temperature. So we have already done that. 
and we need to change this coefficient. The unit of this value is percent capacity per degree Celsius. Since I have left the smart shunt in, in settings to measure Celsius, we will use this right here. Now, the typical value below 20 degrees Celsius is 1% of capacity per degree Celsius for lead acid batteries and 0.5% capacity per degree Celsius for lithium iron phosphate batteries. So, as, as the beginning of this, let's say, adventure of guesstimating the capacity, I'm going to put it as it is recommended in the instruction manual. I will monitor it over a period of time and if I if I see that I need to adjust this number I'm going to post a video about that but normally normally these settings will probably guesstimate properly during the year. So what it says, the available battery capacity decreases with the temperature. The temperature coefficient delta is the percentage the battery capacity changes with the temperature when the temperature decreases to less than 20 degrees Celsius. Above 20 degrees Celsius, the influence of the temperature on, on capacity is relatively low and is not taken into the account. Typically, the reduction compared to the capacity at 20 degrees Celsius is 18% at 0 degrees Celsius and 40% at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Now we all know we're not going to be taking our lithium ion phosphate batteries below maybe negative 2, 3 if you have a really low discharge rate. But anyways, this is what it is. The unit of this value, as I said before, is percent capacity per degree Celsius. Once again, we are going to keep this at 0.5 degrees per percent capacity per degree Celsius. So, as discussed in the instruction manual, we are going to set this temperature coefficient at 0.5% capacity per degree Celsius. We'll see what kind of a long-term effect this has on guesstimating what kind of a capacity we have in the battery, in the power walls. But what prompted me to install the temperature sensor is, is my car. That's what prompted me to install the temperature sensor. Now, when you're looking at these modern cars, um, you should know that they have a very sophisticated gasometers, so to say, in these cars to, to see what your range will be at a certain temperature, and everything is monitored to no end. So, I, because of that, I kind of decided, okay, the winter is coming, the summer, and guessing on the smart shunt was really good, but what happens when the temperatures go low and low in my garage is about low 40s 40s or upper 30s so that's why i kind of decided to do this video install a temperature sensor and see what kind of a what kind of a guessing game we can get when we include a temperature sensor and here it is nicely displayed in Home Assistant, where you can always take a look at it. I'm in the United States, so degrees Fahrenheit is my measurement. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and uh, I'll post more videos if I get more time during the winter. I've been pretty busy with the kids and life. Everything is working just fine. We have some mad power now that... Um, that the temperature has gone down and after seven days worth of rain what it feels like uh, we are getting some beautiful weather right now so I'm gonna do more tests on that um, and we'll go from there 
Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you all soon.